Hello everyone, today's video is how to replace the hard disk in this Lenovo Z50-70 model name is 20354 manufactured in either 2014 or 2012 so the machine just looks like a fairly uh, standard low-cost Lenovo laptop has a modular keyboard at least so if that needs replacing you can do that without too much trouble and this one looks super simple to get to everything which is nice get a screwdriver and this panel here has three screws along the front unscrew them This panel should slide towards where these screws are, so I'm going to literally put my hand across both, put pressure on it and pull it towards me. And now it's slid about half a centimetre, I can lift that panel out. And there we have it. Two sticks of memory, the wireless card, the uh, CPU heatsink and fan assembly and the hard disk and the hard disk is what I'm after I do notice on this that there's quite a bit of dust in the vents on the underside here so while I've got this cover off I'm going to use compressed air on it to clear that I might use compressed air on the fan here as well which seems to have a lot of uh, dust on it as well however task at hand is the hard disk so there is one screw which is uh, top left for me and then another screw bottom left bottom right and top right the hard disk then slides towards uh, my left side so the opposite side of the RAM away from the RAM that's disconnected it from the uh, SATA connector here and then we should just be able to lift the drive out and it's in its own little caddy there are then four screws with a really ridiculously small head I'm going to have to use a jeweler's screwdriver for that And then for me it's really easy to forget the orientation of these uh, brackets. So I'm going to hold the brackets in place rather than just let them fall off because uh, when I put the new drive in I want to remember which way round they were. Cool. I can even get that one undone. There we go. Okay, so that's all those screws undone. The new drive I'm going to put in, Crucial MX500. And, as I say, super easy to forget the orientation of these so now I've left it like that I can now lift these up in the same way they were on the hard disk and put them in the right place it might just be me that's being very bad at remembering how things go but that's uh, the workflow that works for me
that's one side of the bracket on. And the other side of the bracket on. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. I will clone the data that's on this drive onto the SSD. If you're doing stuff for home use, then I'd highly recommend using Macrium Reflect. Along with a USB to serial ATA connector. So you'd install Macrium Reflect on your working computer. Um, sorry, get the new drive, plug it into the adapter, plug the adapter into the computer, use Macrium Reflect, which is free for home use, um, to clone the data onto the new drive, and then swap out the, uh, the drive, and off you go. Occasionally you will get times where uh, the machine won't boot, um, use the old drive to create a Macrium Reflect recovery disk and boot off of that recovery USB disk and then there's an option in there to repair boot problems and that usually solves the issue. So the next thing you'll see will be me putting the machine back together with the SSD in it. Okay, we're back. Data's cloned onto this. Case of dropping it back into the drive bay and then sliding it over so that it makes connection to the serial ATA connector. And then there's the four screws which hold the drive in place. Then the cover, which about half a centimetre from where it would otherwise sit, you drop it in and then push it towards the battery. And then there are three screws along the front of the machine. And there we go. That's the hard disk replaced in this Lenovo Z50-70. Hopefully now, if I turn this on, you will see that we get Windows booting. Windows is booting, and we should get to the log on screen. Perfect, there we go. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.